There it is. Okay. <laughs> Look, I can play with no hands. Are you guys ready? So, uh, this is gonna be me uh, reviewing the Spires Plus 15 Tyrannical Bolstering uh, Storming that uh, we just did. There's no voice comms. Um, and uh, nothing major. Uh, if you have any questions, um, I will only be answering questions that is related to the run um, while I do this. So uh, if you have questions about the run, feel free. I'll stop and I'll talk about it. Uh, if it's unrelated to the run, then uh, hold your tongue until afterwards. So uh, I don't know how much damage these guys are going to do. So the first pull... It's always going to be like a testing pool where you kind of feel um, what is going to happen. So if I just pause it here, right now, I don't know if we're going to pull three, if we're going to pull six, or if we're going to pull uh, six plus the Goliath, right? Uh, so I kind of have a plan for all of them. If, if we only do three, then uh, I'm assuming that the next one is going to be three plus Goliath. So then I'm going to hold cooldowns. If we pull six, then I'm going to use everything. If we pull seven, then I'm obviously going to use everything. I'm going to prioritize the Goliath so we don't have huge bolstering issues. Uh, what ends up happening is that we end up pulling six and pulling back. Um, one of them chains really late, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, you can see here it's going to come really, really late. So right now, um, you can also see that that I'm I'm not really focused too much on putting Siphon Lives up uh, on this pack because I am very, very unsure about how long it would live. Right now, uh, because it's bolstering, I'm going to be targeting this guy and putting my, all my dots up on it, including my... UA, I think you, I put UA a haunt on this target to uh, nuke it down because it's going to be outside the main cleave, which means that it's uh, going to be like giga bolstered if we kill the big pack first. So you see, I put, I put up my dots here, I do soul rot in the pack, and then I start doing raptures. I should probably have casted haunt earlier on the main target. Uh, I don't do it, but that's it's not a huge deal. So you can see here, all the all the damage that was done to this target was basically just my damage, uh, nuking it down, so we don't have it be on a hundred percent with like seven balls, six balls or sex. So now I kind of had no, and now I kind of know how much damage. Um, yeah, I should have rubied earlier too. Uh, it was more like as soon as I saw that guy was outside, it was very much like um, uh, maintenance mode, right? Like uh, it wasn't it wasn't planned. Uh, trying to salvage the pull. So right here, uh, we pull the Goliath into the three, which means that I'm going to be doing uh, just Goliath priority damage. But I can still keep uh, keep my dots up on a, a lot of the targets here. So I have time to put up like a big big siphon life ramp. I have my soul rod ready in two seconds, so I'm going to unstable another seed to refresh. PS soul rod, and then I go. Um, it it does take a little bit too long to do this setup. So I end up having to refresh some agonies in the middle of my sword window, but it's still worth it to do it like this, I think. I could have potentially gone for a slower setup and not detonated my seed, uh, so that I didn't have to do the double seed before I before I went in. I don't really need to... I can skip ahead over here. So right now, it's a planning thing. Um, it... In Spires, there's only really one way to go. Like, you go forward until you hit the first boss. You're going to get pride um, on after this pack, and then you're going to gonna go into the boss. And that's how it is every single time for every group. Uh, unless you miraculously skip the start, but I don't think even think that's good, because it's really good count in the start. So, uh, you, you should have an idea of how much time it takes for you to do this pack. I actually mi miscalculate it, uh, and I use my two-minute cooldowns here, when I probably should have saved uh, saved my Dark Soul to use it with Dark Lair on boss. Uh, I end up using Dark Soul here. Uh, and it's really good to do that because you get a really, really like sick ramp. You're going to see me do pretty good damage here because of all the haste I have. I should have cast... A, again, I should have cast a Ruby a little bit earlier. It's a bit, a bit, a bit bad that I'm casting Ruby that late. So that 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 is a, that is just a misplay on my part. Very, very, just a, honestly, just a misplay. So I do decent damage on this pack with my Dark Soul. Um, and then uh, when this last mob dies, it's going to be the Mender plus the Pride. 
And right now, I realize that I made a bit of a mistake. On a higher key, I would have been able to pop my one minutes here on the pride. Uh, and then I would have had my dark lair and my uh, dark soul lined up again uh, on the boss after like 20 seconds or something. Which is really, really a uh, big value in the pride buff. I realized that I'm not going to do that, so I'm, I'm I'm holding my one minute cooldowns, which is ready in five seconds, which would be kind of wasted on on this pride, and then I'm gonna use um, use my PS and Soul Rot together with full dots and extend it with Dark Lair without worrying too much about my Dark Soul window. Why reseed if they have 40k HP? The seed itself does damage, so you have to factor in if the seed does more damage than the Raptures would do. A, rapture, a seed does is the same damage as a two dot rapture, um, excluding uh, unstable scaling with focus malignancy. So uh, on this fight, I put up full. Ba I basically just put up full dots on everything. Um, so what? Refresh, and then I press haunt. I put Shadows and Brace on secondary target, and then I can just... They run out of range, but I can just sit there and cast Raptures. These Raptures are hitting for full damage. So I got a pretty decent uh, a pretty decent uh, burst off there without uh, my Dark Soul, or Ruby, or Blood Fury. When you're doing a bit higher keys, then it lines up really nicely in Spires with having, using two, two sets of two minutes before boss, and then you hold your uh, Dark Lair for the four minutes. So you get here around the four minute mark. When you play um, Rolling Agony, okay, I'm gonna stop it here. When you play Rolling Agony uh, on two targets, you with Siphon Life, you do have, or you should have uh, enough haste to maintain Shadows Embrace on two targets if you play it perfectly. It is really hard to execute. You can see me kind of starving here, but I'm able to keep it, uh, keep Shadows Embrace on two targets until I have to uh, cast my Raptures, which is a little bit of a DPS increase, but it's not too, it's not too major. So here I have my Dark Soul. I have my I have my Soul Rot ready in five seconds. So I press my Ruby early enough this time, Soul Rot, and then I try to. Uh, I don't think I should have refreshed Shadows Embrace on my off target there. I should have just gone in and dumped more shards into that window. That would have been more damage. So we're finished with the boss, and here I'm kind of like, okay, what are we doing? Because uh, remember, we're not on voice. There's no, there's no MDT that's been linked, and all I have to go about is like I basically just follow the tank and kind of like see what he's doing. So right now, I see that he pulls this mob, and I see that he's going over here. So I know already that he wants to group all of this and probably group go back on the, uh, on the praetor. I already know this just from his movement. So reading your tank's movement can be really, really beneficial. You see that I'm not detonating my seed. I'm not even dotting my seed target. So it doesn't detonate early. You're going to see here it actually detonates on everything, I think. Actually, except the cure. Okay, so it didn't detonate on the um, on the big guy. So I have to do a manual refresh there. I get a few raptures out before I have to reseed. Re-agony. And then I have my um, soul rot ready here. So I get my soul rot out. On cooldown. And then a few raptures and some agony refreshes. I should have probably gotten one more or two more raptures here and just let one agony fall. Um, since it's bolstering, you can see me that I'm basically just targeting the high HP targets with like I have a UA on one and I have uh, on one of the high uh, higher HP targets and then I put uh, haunt on one of the higher HP targets and uh, and uh, and siphon life. So I'd, I try to uh, be I try to basically hit whatever is highest HP here. You can kind of you can be very efficient as affliction with uh, with good haunt UA and siphon life management with uh, to offset bolstering because you do so much more damage to your uh, unstable affliction target via focus malignancy. Here again, I'm like, okay, are we going forward? Are we going in? Uh, or are we going back? I mean, so I see, okay, he's standing there. So when they come here, he's gonna vortex. 
and then uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of judging what I'm supposed to do here. So I see that I have my cooldowns ready in five seconds, and I'm like, okay, do I use two minutes here? I'm not quite sure. I don't think so. I don't think I end up using two minutes, but I do end up using one minutes because uh, I think two minutes. Uh, if I press Dark Soul here, it would have been a bit overkill. But uh, the uh, my Soul Rot and PS basically get full value, so that's pretty. That was pretty nice. So it's, it's all about it's all about the planning when you when you do these when you do these keys. Uh, how important is it to main uh, Shadows and Breaks and primary target on trash uh, versus applying another Siphon Life? Um, it depends if it's actually a prior target or if it's just like you just press Haunt to get the ten percent damage um, on something. You know, uh, it it is it is worth the global uh, in almost every scenario to to tag it. But what you would do is you wouldn't focus too much on getting to three stacks of Shadows and Breaks instantly. You would rather uh, use Haunt. And then when the Shadow's Embrace is about to time out, you tag it with a Drain Soul, and then the Haunt is going to refresh it to 3 afterwards. So you kind of do it like a slow Shadow's Embrace ramp, rather than uh, spending the, the 2 Drain Ticks instantly. Uh, so you can uh, use those globals for more dots instead. So here, um, we're going into Squad Leader Pack, uh, and I'm basically just trying to, trying to figure out uh, what is going to happen here. I know that we're gonna kill this squad leader before, and I know that that is gonna spawn pride. So I'm uh, I'm co comfortable enough with the pathing that I, I I know what is gonna happen here, and I'm like, okay, so we're gonna kill the squad leader. The pride is gonna spawn. I can ruby a low HP target. I can full dot the pride. So I'm gonna full dot the pride here. I'm gonna. I think I early dark soul. I early dark soul to make the setup faster. I ruby the low HP target. I go full. Uh, full cooldowns, and you see here, I basically cast Soul Rot. I, I cast Soul Rot as it comes back up. Um, so the timing uh, from the previous pack is like basically perfect here. I cast PS, Soul Rot as it comes up into dar extended Dark Lair. Double rap triple Rapture, one Drain Soul, and then get three Sex of Shadows Embrace here, and then continue dumping. So this is basically, I basically solo this Pride right here. Like that Pride is, is mine. And that's, that is doable. Um, I do have a, quite a bit of haste, so it does make it easier to set up. Uh, there is no like minimum amount of haste that you need to have in order to do this, but uh, it makes it easier with more haste. Um, going into a 5-pack of Easter Divers, they have quite low HP, um, so I'm, I'm not too worried about this pack. Uh, I, I know that I'm not going to do a lot of damage on it. You can do it on a, on a higher key, like if you're pushing a bit. Then you can do quite relevant damage on those packs, even without PS and uh, Sorot, just because you're able to have so like a lot of dots out when you when you press uh, when you press your raptures. Again, it's a squad leader pack into, uh, and then we're gonna finish off the squad leader and then uh, kill off the rest. I try to make my. Um, you can see here that uh, this is kind of like a decision making process. I think that I detonate my seed. A bit too early here. Um, so the C detonates here uh, before I've gotten any Siphon Lifes up. Which means that the Siphon Life refresh plus PS uh, into Soul Rot is going to take me into the territory or having to refresh dots. But you're going to see me make a, a choice here. So when I press my PS and Soul Rot, you can see that I'm basically... I know that these dots are going to time out. But I'm choosing to cast two Raptures and then... Uh, even though my dots, are, even though my dots are falling off, I'm just kind of committing to the window where I have the most amount of dots up, and then I can refresh afterwards. Um, it's it's kind of like uh, a dynamic decision making process if you should do that or if you should uh, uh, try to refresh early for the next window, right? So you you kind of have to make a, make a decision if you commit to one or commit to two. Uh, this pack is pretty much. Uh, it, this pack is pretty textbook, uh, a textbook example of how to play like three target clear with Siphon Life. So I seed one, I agony the other two, I agony that one last, I UA a target into Siphon Lives, I press a haunt, I press a PS on off target because I don't want to, I don't want my PS target to die. If I had Soul Rot here, I would cast Soul Rot in this instant. instant. 
uh, and then you just spam raptures. And these raptures are going to keep going until your uh, corruption and siphon life sand, pretty much. And this pack lasted for 25 seconds on three targets, and I'm almost not, like only PS as my cooldown, doing 8k DPS. Obviously, I'm very geared on this Warlock, so that uh, does factor in. But it is uh, totally possible to do relevant damage on these packs if they live for like around 20 seconds. Which most packs in like 15s and like between 13 to 15 will do. Uh, moving into this pack is uh, going to be my Dark Soul pack. I see that I have my Dark Soul, my PS, and my Sword ready. Um, I, I throw out a few Siphon Lives, but not too many. Because uh, I, I see that it's dying pretty fast, so I know that I have to... I, I kind of have to just commit here um, to to whatever I can get out early. So having having a good understanding of when stuff is about to die, and like how much how many Siphon Lives and Agonies and etc. you can put out before you have to spend your shards so you don't uh, overcap and you don't have things dying while you still have, still have uh, raptures you want to cast uh, it's pretty important also what what is this cat someone needs to tell me what that cat is <laughs> uh. okay uh so right now we have pride. I think that we're gonna pull uh, one squad leader pack that is coming in this way, uh, or that we're gonna pull one Goliath pack. We end up double pulling, and you're gonna see me on this pack press uh, use my prior target damage to kill the Goliath and the squad leader. You see, I I kind of assess the situation. Oh, we're going right, and then I I open up with a seed on the squad leader. I agony the two high HP targets. I actually also think I agony uh, the Inquisitor. Um, yeah, there we go. I fold out the Inquisitor, and then uh, I PS a Goliath, and then I and then I extend everything. Uh, preferably, you would have Dark Soul here as well, but I used that on the previous pack, so I don't have it ready. But uh, the point of, the point I'm trying to make here is that you you want to unbolstering it specifically. You want to try to use your prior target with unstable and siphon life management to do more Rapture damage to the high HP targets than the low HP targets. You see here, I don't really care too much about... Uh, like, I, I don't put my... Uh, I, 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 if, you, if you look at this pack from the start, I don't put my uh, Agony... I don't put any Agonies or Siphon Lives up on the Aether Divers here. Um, because... Or the... Um, uh, the champion because they're lower HP than everything else and if I did that then I would kill everything quicker which means more bolstering stacks to the main target. Uh, how many shards do you usually pull before going into a trash pull? Um, it's it's no set amount. You want to be on you want to be on zero shards, like you want to be on zero shards when shard sniping opportunities start. So right here I'm basically just uh, spamming myself down to zero shards and then I'm gonna get uh, two shards from the UA drain. If I can get it. Okay, I didn't get it. And then... So I ended up on two shards here. Preferably that would be three. But you basically just spend shards as they come in uh, at the end of a pack until you get shard sniping opportunities. Again here, the bear just goes in. Does bear things. Um, I'm considering if I should Dark Soul here. Um... Uh, it ends up being the wrong play, I think, to press Dark Soul. Actually, no, it, it, it's not the wrong. It's not the wrong play to press Dark Soul here because I want to line up my Dark Soul with Dark Lair. So I, I know that I have to do that here in order to, uh, in order to it to, to line up later. So that's what I'm, um, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Um, because it's a Dark Soul pull, I have some extra globals that I can do. I put my, uh, you see here that I put my Siphon Lives on the high HP targets, but not the Aether Diver. So, uh, the the Champion, the Praetor, and the uh, little cat thing gets uh, Siphon Life Treatment, the Aether Diver does not, and the main target with the Squad Leader gets uh, full dots uh, with everything. I get my Ruby buff, I just spam Raptors until my uh, Corruption sends. I kind of get aggro here, which is a bit scary. Uh, I'm able to coil it away, and then he taunts, which is nice. 
And then I'm just trying to f find the highest HP target and hit that. Um, the Praetor, the Praetor is generally more important on this pack than than anything else, except for the squad leader. So after the squad leader dies, it, it's it's a good idea to have the Praetor in uh, in main target. Um, again, here on the Pride, uh, you're kind of like sitting. Uh, you're, you're kind of in in in, um, in a spot. So right here. If I just pause it, you have a couple of factors. You're uh, you're looking at your Dark Soul and Dark Lair timer, right? They're they're lined up with each other, but they're not lined up with um, with your Soul Rot. So this Pride is actually dying pretty fast, which means that uh, if I were to cast Soul Rot on cooldown, it would almost do no damage. So what I choose to do instead is to cast uh, a pretty early Soul Rot on the boss, so that it's back up as early as possible, so I can get my after one minute into the boss fight, pretty much, I get, um, I'd get it back. I don't think I would have had PS. We can check if I, if I, if I would have pressed PS on cooldown, would have I, would I have had it back? So right here, PS on twenty. Is it twenty? We can check if it was the right play or not. Twenty-one. I get PS on twenty-one. So that would be. Uh, 50, uh, 56, right? No. Uh, 06. 1406, I would have had it back. I want my imp out here because, uh, of the, the boss jumps away and I don't want my, uh, my pet to miscast. So I summon my imp. So right here, uh, I would have had uh, 13 second cooldown on PS, but I would have been able to get another PS out. But I think the PS with Pride and uh, uh, Solrot uh, with Rapture Dump is worth more damage total than it would be on the Pride itself, assuming that you don't wipe on the Pride, obviously. So I do kind of a scuffed setup here uh, with uh, Solrot into PS. I said this during the run as well, but it's because I want my Solrot to go on cooldown as fast as possible, so I have a chance to get it back towards the end of this fight together with my big cooldowns. So right now I'm basically just uh, pressing uh, pressing shards, like spamming spamming my uh, spamming my raptures my raptures out with, with the pride buff. And then we're going to start pooling um I think after after this one or on this one. Yeah, I start pooling now. So if we fast forward a little bit, I get hit by uh, a thingy majig, which isn't good. You don't want to do that. Uh, I get bopped on this thing. I was about to wall that. And now I refresh all my dots. And it's going to be PS Dark Soul, Ruby, uh, Soul Rot, Dark Clear. And I finish this boss off. So if I didn't press my Soul Rot early, I would have had to wait another 2-3 seconds here. Um, which would have meant that m this Soul Rot window would have been even... Like I would have had 10 seconds left on Soul Rot when the boss dies. Instead of 2 seconds. So it's it's about like trying to find good timings within the key, and then just uh, planning. Pl you want to plan like a minute ahead, thirty seconds ahead the whole time, and try to line up your cooldowns throughout the run. Um, usually, uh, inspires. If you're able to press Dark Soul on pull on the previous boss, then Dark Soul is going to be ready for this boss uh, in almost any key level because of the it takes so long for the. Um, the the now airline uh, now airlines to to put you over here uh, so you can usually dark soul that guy if you pull him uh, if you're scared about walking past this pack you can gateway up here as warlock that's pretty nice uh, it's not needed in any case but you have to watch your pet you can see here that uh, when we pass I wait for my pet to uh, run to me before I press my gateway. Uh, because you see here, I, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking for my pet. My pet comes, and then I press my gateway. Otherwise, this pet can pull. Uh, it can it can pull the pack over there, which isn't ideal, obviously. We end up running on the right side. I would highly recommend running on the left side through the through the mobs instead, or waiting for the tank to group them up before you go. Running like this is very very scary on on high on high keys. So. Uh, I would I would I would not recommend this. Also on bolstering this week, if you touch this mob early, you're trolling. 
you wanna you wanna wait for everything to be in and then go because it, it's just unnecessary bolstering stacks otherwise. You're gonna see here that as soon as it turns the corner, it's like insta blast, and all this does it gives one bolstering stack to all the other mobs here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about uh, in uh, right now is uh, timing on this boss. Um, depending on its cast sequence, getting your soul rot back can be pretty tight. So on this boss, on pull, you're gonna see me, uh, you're gonna see me cast soul rot really, really early, um, in order to get my soul rot back. It doesn't always line up uh, in that way, but it kind of depends if he cast chooses to cast more uh, the final stomp or not. So uh, depending on this cast sequence, uh, you really want to cast this first soul. Or you can see here I cast. Uh, Haunt, Unstable, Agony, and then I press Soul Rot. Yes, I do one Rapture, and then I do the rest of my dots. And then I do basically Raptures until my Soul Rot ends. And then I do uh, double... I should have waited one more tick on Shadows Embrace here. Uh, I think that's a mistake. Like, Rapture, Rapture, Drain. And then I should have waited for the second tick to get three stacks here. So that's a mistake. Um... But this means that when you can see here, I still have 15 seconds left. He does a stomp, and then he needs to do um, he needs to do two two of these. Uh, uh, yeah, two two of uh, two of these. What is it called? Pur purifying blast, I think. Yeah, purifying blast. He needs to do two purifying blasts in this instance. So in this scenario, it would have been fine to do a little bit later, so what? But I don't like risking it, so I tend to just press it early. Um, right here is another kind of important point. You're in all your cooldowns. It's very tempting right now to just spend all your shards. But if you notice, I don't actually have a um, synergy proc. So I'm not going to spend all my shards. I'm going to try to fish for a proc. I don't end up getting it here. But I only have to commit when I see that I need to be on zero shards when my soul rot ends. That's like my hard timer. When soul rot ends, I need to be on zero shards. So uh, I wait until like six, seven seconds after I press my cooldowns until I start my dump. Um, obviously, if you already have your synergy proc, then you can go instantly. Uh, so yeah. Um, if you're doing a key that me uh, that is high enough for you to get to the second damage phase, it's pretty much exactly. Um, it's pretty much it's pretty much exactly. Uh, it's pretty much exactly two minutes in between uh, each phase, each damage phase. So you can use your one minute cooldowns on cooldown, and they're gonna be back up for the next phase. Not much more to say here. Uh, we go up, and usually it's a good idea uh, on Inspires to line everything up for the last guy. We we have so much damage in this group that it's not really necessary. I end up only using one minutes, but it's really good to have either Dark Soul or Dark Soul and Dark Lair ready for the last guy because he he can be quite scary. He can be quite scary on uh, on on uh, at least on higher keys. When you do your weekly 15s, as long as everyone is alive, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Uh, so right here, I use uh, my two-minute cooldowns. And the idea is that I want to, ideally, I would want to use one set of one-minute cooldowns on the next one. And then I would have uh, Dark Soul, Dark Lair, and my one minutes ready for the last mini boss. We end up killing it way too fast. Uh, so I only have, you can see here, I only have my one minutes ready on like 30 percent so i actually in this in in this moment right now i'm like okay i i can't use my one minutes here because i want them ready for when we use the spear uh, on the next mini boss so that that is a, that is a change in my decision making that i make on the spot depending on uh, when i see everything that is unfolding in the moment right and and that kind of uh, that kind of decision making is uh, can be really really uh, beneficial i do ask uh, the tank i do ask the tank in party chat to hold the spear for like five seconds so i get to do my setup i do 
a little bit scuffed setup here, I think. Uh, I, I should have pressed, pressed it a little bit differently, but it ends up kind of working out anyway. Um, I, I didn't spend enough shards uh, after this guy died. I should have been on a two or one shard right now instead of three. Because you can see here that I get I get a shard from... Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, if you have UA on the on this these mini bosses when they die you will you will not get the UA right straight away you will get the UA after like UA shard after like five seconds so you see here I go from four three to four shards pretty much in here right here but that's not an agony tick the second one was an agony tick but the first one was unstable so that's why I go to shard cap and that's why I said I should be on lower shards when I come into this so I don't shard cap here. Uh, anyway, we end up killing this, and from now on out, it's just uh, the pride. Uh, we haven't been having any problems on pride, so I could I could probably have used uh, PS in this situation, um, it, and I could also probably have used my sword rod when it comes back up. I choose not to, just to have it lined up for the pride buff afterwards, since we haven't been having any problems whatsoever in the key. But that might be different. Like maybe you have a lower geared healer or a more inexperienced healer. That is struggling on the pride, and then you should try to help them out more, even even if uh, I don't have to in this key. Uh, Imp to spell is very valuable on this fight. You can dispel the debuffs. Uh, again, you're gonna see me uh, wait for a synergy proc. I end up getting it here, and then it just means it's go time. If I wouldn't have gotten a synergy proc, I use my cooldowns here. Uh, I get the three stacks of Shadows Embrace. If I would not have gotten a Synergy proc here, I would have waited for a Synergy proc exactly as I did on the previous boss. Um, but I get it, and then it's just like it's just go time instantly. Um, I dispelled the lost confidence on myself. Uh, if it wasn't on me, then I would have a mouse over uh, command mouse over exist command demon uh, macro to dispel on friendly targets. Um, it's really good to set up a circle close to the center so that you can uh, effect, really go out and pick up a ball in intermission and go out really fast. Another thing you also want to do on this boss is as, as soon as it goes out in the, into the middle, you want to make sure that you refresh your unstable and agony at least. You want to be on low shards and refresh unstable and agony. You can spend leftover globals doing corruption and siphon life and haunted stuff, but unstable and agony are really uh, the most two most important stuff uh, things to have here. Because you don't want your agony to drop, and with uh, rolling agony, it will not drop uh, if you fully refresh it before it goes off. You see, we cast a spear here, and it still has 10 seconds left of my agony and 4 seconds left of my UA, which is really, really good uh, for damage. I do full dot refresh here into 1 minute cooldowns. Uh, I'm not really going to talk too much about the 1 minute cooldowns and stuff, but... Um, again, we're going to get to the 30. I can show you again how we get to the 30% phase. And I can also show you uh, the dispels here. So I dispel the tank and then the healer dispels himself. Very, very good. Um, yeah, then we get to the 30% phase. He jumps away and you're going to see me. I want to be on low shards uh, when he goes into the... When he goes into the center on 30%, so I spend my last shards, I do my unstable and my uh, agony, and then I just spend leftover globals uh, doing whatever else. So I get a corruption and I get a tag with Shadows Embrace to refresh, um, uh, to refresh a uh, drain soul to refresh Shadows Embrace. You can also aim to spell the first stack here in intermission it helps out healers a ton because it means that they can prioritize other people uh, for the dispels. Uh, and the debuff does hurt quite a bit, especially if you don't hit the spear straight away. Boss comes down. Um, I actually think for some reason that I have Dark Clear here. Uh, I remember that I, I was like, oh, I don't have Dark Clear. So the plan was to extend everything and then go into the Triple Shadows Embrace. Uh, I should, in hindsight, I should have refreshed Shadows Embrace before going into the big burn. So I should have done uh, Unstable, Agony, Corruption, Shadows Embrace, Refresh, and then another Siphon Life, and then PS, uh, PS Ruby, Sorot. I don't end up doing that. It's not a huge deal. It's a tiny misplay on my part. Um, for some reason, I thought I had Dark Clear here, probably because we usually have it ready on higher keys uh, than I'm more used to. I don't do a lot of 15s. Of course, you have to hard commit at the end when it's Abyssal Detonation on sub 5%. You have to hard commit on the outside. 
pray that the boss dies. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for the Spires run. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, enjoyed the analysis. Uh, is there anyone that has any questions about this? I'd be happy to answer them. How's the Pepsi? The Pepsi is nice. This will be uploaded to YouTube, yes. <laughs>